in question 5.1, they just want us to label the forces R, S, and T. So R we know is the normal force. That's normal force. Uh, let's just see what's happening here. So a crate of mass. Okay, so this is actually very interesting. This crate is sliding down the incline. And then it says here the crate experiences a constant frictional force. This will probably be the frictional force. And then S would obviously just be gravity. Now normally we would um, normally we would have gravity as perpendicular and parallel, but the way that they've set up this question is that they've just labeled it like that. And then it says, give a reason why force R does no work on the crate. Well, we know that work is equal to F delta X cos theta. And even if we knew what the, okay, so we could work out the normal force. Let's just say F normal. Um, but now here's where things are a little bit weird. So the distance is a little bit weird because, I mean, we're moving this way, but the normal force is acting that way. So the distance is a bit weird, first of all. But the most important thing I want to show you guys is that the object is moving this in this direction, but the normal force acts in that direction. So the angle is 90 degrees. And so if we had to put cos 90 here, no matter what these are, you're going to get an answer of zero because cos 90 is zero. And that is the main reason. It's because it's perpendicular to the direction of motion. Now they tell us that the crate passes A at a speed of two meters per second and then moves a distance of 12 meters before reaching point B. Calculate the net work done on the crate during its motion from A to B. So the net work done is W net. Now that doesn't necessarily mean we're just going to go use W net equals to change in EK. We might just need to use W net. So we know that the formula for work is equal to F delta X cos theta. Now I'm going to draw another free body diagram because I don't really like these types of free body diagrams. It's better when you've got gravity in perpendicular and parallel components. So we've got a frictional force. We've got a normal force, gravity perpendicular, and gravity parallel. And then what did they tell us about friction? Oh, they did give us the friction of 190 newtons. Okay, so the forces that we would have to consider for W net would be these ones over here. So we would say that W net is equal to W due to friction plus W due to gravity parallel. Now, I'm going to use this formula on each of those now. So that means that W net is going to be equal to the W due to friction, which is um, the force of friction times by X times by cos theta plus FG parallel times delta X times cos theta. You see what I did there? I used this formula on each of those. Okay. And so the force of friction is 190. The distance that we are moving is 12. Now we're moving in this direction, but gravity, I mean, friction acts in the opposite direction. So that's going to be cos 180 plus. Now FG parallel is, remember that FG parallel has the formula mg sin theta. And so mg sin theta, so that's going to be the mass, which is 70 times 9.8 times by the sin of 20 degrees. Then the distance is 12. Now, we are moving down the slope, and gravity is also acting down the slope, so that'll be cos zero. And now we can just go fill all of this in, and so that's going to give us 535.51 joules. And so that's 5.3. Now, 5.4 says write down the work energy theorem in words, and so that one would be this over here. The net work done on an object is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. Then 5.5 says use the work energy theorem to calculate the speed of the crate at point B. So we know that the net the, the work energy theorem is W net equals to change in E k. And that's what it says. The net work done is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. And so that's the formula that we'll use for 5.5. Now we already know W net from the previous question. We know that that is 535.51. Kinetic energy, the formula for kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So that's going to be a half mv uh, final squared minus a half mv initial squared. And so 535.51 is equal to a half. Now the mass is 70. The final velocity is what we are trying to find. 
the velocity initial at point A was 2 meters per second, and then remember, squared. And so now I'm just taking everything to the left-hand side. And so on the left, so what I did is I took this over to the left. And so what I get is 675.51 equals to a half of 70 is 35. I'll then divide by 35 and then take the square root. And we should get a final velocity of 4.39 meters per second. 4.39 meters per second.